Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you around my fuel injected CBR250RR motorbike. This is a project that's been in the works for almost 10 years now. It's currently running a Life Racing F88R ECU and uh, earlier in 2020 it had a major electrical upgrade where I stripped out the old wiring harness and completely replaced it all with, uh, with my own design. There's a lot of modifications on the bike and I'd love to be able to go into a lot of detail on every one of them but unfortunately that would make this video way too long. So if, there, if you spot anything while we're going around and you'd like to know more about it, leave me a comment, let me know what you'd like to know and uh, we'll consider it for a video in the future. Let's get started. So we'll start with the front end because that's probably the most obvious change from standard. The majority of the front end, as in the forks and the axle and the top clamps and all, are from a 2004 model GSXR 600. The wheel is still the standard CBR 250 front wheel because I wanted to maintain the same feel and handling of the bike and the same look of the wheels front and rear. That needed uh, new wheel spacers and new wheel bearings in order to get it to fit. The discs are from a CBR 900RR or CBR 600F3 model. They have they bolt straight onto the CBR front wheel and they have the right diameter and offset in order to fit the new radial calipers. The calipers are from a 2003 model GSX-R1000. They were chosen over the 600 calipers because one of the pistons is smaller, so it results in a slightly harder brake lever, which I'm more of a fan of. Underneath the, the front mudguard, which you can't really see, I've got a Hall Effect wheel speed sensor. Um, the wheel speed sensor was originally installed for a Coso dash but now it gets fed directly to the ECU. It picks up off of these uh, small socket head cap screws that I've inserted in every second brake disc bobbin. Sticking with the front end and moving up to the dash area, I've maintained the standard ignition switch inside the GSXR triple clamps. Uh, that's why it doesn't quite fit, it's a bit too low and a bit too offset. On the braking side I have a radial master cylinder from a B14R1 uh, with TWM lever. The brake fluid reservoir is from a Triumph 675 Daytona and I've swapped out the clutch lever assembly also for a TWM unit to match the brake lever. All the switch gear and throttle tubes are all standard from the, the Honda. Uh, the dash is an aftermarket Coso RX2N 20K unit, it's quite nice. Um, it's designed as a standalone dash unit though so that it can be installed on any motorbike from the mid 90s. Um, I wasn't really happy with that arrangement. Um, I wanted all the inputs to the dash coming directly from the ECU. So I built a CAN bus dash controller based off of a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller. And that sits inside in this box here, uh, which is mounted to the OEM high beam relay bracket. So that receives all the data from the ECU via CAN and then um, transmits or replicates the signals required for the analog dash. So, uh, and those include water temp, oil temp, uh, wheel speed and engine speed, and oil pressure and EOBD. Over to the Left hand side of the dash, I have a Bosch T-MAP sensor uh, for monitoring ambient pressure and temperature. This switch here underneath the, the left hand switch gear is a momentary push button that's connected to the ECU. I use it for marking 
uh, data logs specifically for marking steady state conditions uh, within data logs. Moving back towards the rear of the bike, the biggest change here is the rear shock. This is a custom Olin's build for the bike. Uh, none of the off-the-shelf options from Nitron or Penske really fitted for me. They have an aluminium top mount which fouls the frame up here. So I opted um, to get a, an Olin's unit built for the bike specifically to my requirements by the local Olin's dealership. And that has worked out really well. It's completely transformed the handling of the bike and together with the, the front end, uh, I couldn't be happier with it. The rear sets are Tiger rear sets, mostly because they look pretty, but they do actually give some much needed ground clearance um, for track days. I've fitted a push shift sensor to allow full throttle up shifts. Um, that's uh, sold as an aftermarket part to for Triumph bikes. And then I've just made up a, a push rod to fit it in. On the other side of the bike, um, biggest change is the exhaust system. It, the system, or at least up to the end can, is a TSR 4 into 2 to 1 system um, made for the Japanese market. I managed to secure this one from Australia a couple of years ago and it's a really nice unit on the bike. Good upgrade. The end can though is my own making. The um, the both end caps here are the original TSRs, but the TSR silencer was in a fair bit of disrepair when I got it and the perf tube ended up falling out of it at one point during a track day, so I ended up making my own. Um, I do have a blog post on the making of that silencer, which I'll link in the description below. The bo Lambda Boss here is from the previous micro squirt ECU installation. Um, I only had one lambda input and this one section here was really the only place I could put it because it's upside down. I couldn't leave the sensor in there permanently because it would, um, I'd get moisture collecting on the sensor and it would break the sensor in no time flat. So with the current installation, I have a dual Lambda setup. Um, they're fitted underneath the bike here. We'll, uh, I'll show you them in a minute. Okay, that's um, really all we can see with the fairings on. So let's get the fairings off and uh, I'll show you around the rest of it. So, up the front of the bike, um, get the first look at the new wiring harness. It's uh, fully sheathed in DR25, sealed transition points, and um, the majority of the connectors, or as many as I could, I swapped out for sealed connectors as well. And it does make this area a little bit bulkier than usual. Um, also, the fact that I've actually put more wiring into this area but um, it still fits quite nicely, I think, in my opinion at least. Um, I've added wiring provisions for drive-by-wire throttle and uh, brake pressure sensor. Those to be added sometime in the future, maybe. Here you can get a better look at the, uh, sorry. 
Here you can get a better look at the CAN bus dash controller. The box is a little big, and that's purely just down to the connector. Uh, these ballasts down here, they're for a LED headlight conversion uh, in order to try and scrimp and save as much power as possible from the standard alternator to make up for the extra current draw from the fuel pump and the rest of the EFI components I had to uh, make some changes to the to the headlights. Coming down to the left hand side of the bike and the engine casings I'm just going to show you the oil temperature and pressure sensors that I've installed. The oil temperature sensor down here is a Bosch M14 by 1.5 threaded sensor. Um, it fits directly in place of the sump drain plug which is quite nice. Um, the only thing is that with the the way that the sensor is orientated here if I was to keep the original sensor connector and then have a wiring harness connector on it and then have the the harness come back around I felt it was just going to be too high here so I've uh, cut off the sensor connector part and uh, potted and booted a flying lead on instead so the actual sensor connector comes up to here. The pressure sensor is another Bosch sensor it's a 10 bar pressure sensor with an M10 conical thread seal the most obvious thing to do would have been to modify the uh, the thread in the sump here. The original is an 8 BSP. The only issue again is the size of the sensor compared to the standard one and when you added a connector on as well I just didn't have the, uh, the clearance uh, in underneath the fairing. So I uh, opted instead to add a, an 8 BSP to dash 3 adapter and then get this hose here made up which uh, goes from dash 3 to an M10 conical seal just isolates the sensor and the sensor itself is held in place with a p-clip um, underneath the fairing bracket here. Just underneath the seat area and in behind the tail fairing I have the power distribution module for the new wiring harness it's an MTA modular um, PDM so the grey bits that you can see are, uh, are purchased and we have four relays and all the fuses that we need in here. Um, the original bracketry may allows it to be bolted down onto a horizontal surface but I didn't I couldn't get that to work here so I 3d printed my own end brackets that just click on in place um, and then they allow me to pick up on I've installed a riv nut in this side and this the rear side here picks up on one of the old pillion peg mounting holes uh, I've also incorporated in a little bit of a uh, strain relief position for a cable tie uh, to uh, to fix the harness to here. The um, obviously underneath here was all open when we had the the standard pillion pegs. Um, so I've tried to close that off as best as I could in order to um, to protect the PDM from any dirt that gets thrown up from underneath. So we get a, just a cool, slightly better view of that here. So you can see there now we have, uh, and if we look at it from underneath, you can see it pretty much closes off any area for dirt. While we're over the back side of the bike actually, you can just give a quick look underneath and show you the uh, the dual lambda sensors that I'm running. If I can get it to focus, yeah. So we have one lambda sensor in each of the two four into two sections here. So our, we have our collectors up the front there. Sorry, get that to focus again. And uh, yeah, two lambda sensors here. 
they're installed in accordance with OEM guidelines so they can stay in permanently and essentially the engine gets configured as a zero degree V4 with the two outside cylinders and the two inside cylinders paired. I've most of the engine control electronics housed in underneath the pillion seat in the old storage area. Just come up here. I have the Life Racing F88 RECU is lying flat down in the bottom and I've 3D printed a cradle to hold that in place with some anti-vibration foam. Uh, the box here sitting on top is um, again an isolated anti-vibration foam mount for a GPS and IMU sensor combined. I'm using a Skytrack GPS breakout board in, uh, coupled with a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller um, and that's capturing GPS data through an external antenna which is sitting in underneath the um, the pillion cowl here and that's running at 20 hertz at the moment but it's capable of going up to 50 hertz. Um, this uh, connector here underneath um, on the on the bracket is an RJ45 Ethernet socket which allows me to um, communicate with the ECU so I can just plug the laptop into that point. Um, the ECU is only using four of the eight Ethernet cables so I've uh, repurposed the other four for USB to um, program the software onto the dash controller and also CAN bus so it, it gives me an access point to the to the vehicle CAN. Um, in behind here I have a reasonably temporary K-type thermocouple amplifier module. Again it's um, it's 3.2 or Teensy 3.2 microcontroller based and then transmitting the data on CAN to be picked up by the ECU and anything else that needs it. Um, the, you know, I have the K-type connectors come back to here as well. I am planning on upgrading that to a slightly more permanent installation in the future but it works fine as it is. I've replaced this stock regulator rectifier unit with um, an FHO2OAA aftermarket unit. Um, it's quite a big unit in comparison to the OEM reg rec but uh, it just about fits underneath the tail fairings on this bike and um, and it, it has definitely made an improvement on the charging system. It runs a hell of a lot cooler and, uh, and the voltage is a lot more stable. Not a huge amount to see here underneath the seat area. The, uh, the new harness comes out from underneath the uh, uh, pillion seat and then crosses over the bike to where the OEM harness would come along this subframe underneath. Uh, I do have some extra wiring provisions installed for uh, rear wheel speed sensors, an additional CAN bus module um, and a few other bits and bobs but they're kind of tucked away so you can't really see them. Moving attentions now to underneath the fuel tank area. Things are a little busy here and it is hard to see on the camera but um, I essentially have the standard carburetors which have been modified to take uh, fuel injectors and fuel rail and a throttle position sensor. Um, has made things pretty tight around here. This kind of temporary wiring look here is um, is the fuel pump relay. I originally designed the harness uh, with PWM control of the pump in mind uh, but I had some trouble uh, with that at the start so I've temporarily just installed a, a, a standard relay to control the fuel pump. Uh, the Everything on the throttle bodies is on a separate harness. And these two connectors here. Um, the fuel pump is in tank. Um, so I have the connection to the fuel pump here and, uh, and I have a short fuel hose um, to go down to the fuel rail here. The uh, fuel tank in the pump is from a 2005 ZX-10R. 
Uh, so I've just used the standard quick release fitting on here, which is quite nice. Yeah, and just try and see if we can, if you can see this module down here with the white connector, that's um, a combined manifold pressure sensor and cam position sensor uh, module that I designed and made up myself. Uh, the idea was that rather than modifying the cam cover to get a, a cam position sensor in place, I'm using the Sorry, just change the focus. Um, I'm using the pressure signal from the inlet port, so from cylinder number one. And when the signal drops below a certain threshold, this uh, module outputs um, a cam position sensor to the ECU. Luckily on the F88R, I have the option to disregard the cam position sensor above uh, once 720 sync has been achieved. So it actually only needs to work during cranking and idle, which it does quite well. And that gives me fully sequential fueling and ignition, um, even though I don't have a cam sensor installed. It also doubles as a map sensor, so the, the pressure signal is there, um, so I may as well use it, and that gets sent back to the ECU also. So the last thing really to show here is the exhaust system. Um, here you can see the K-types that I've installed. Uh, they're one and a half mil K-types um, and just welded in compression fittings into each header. And so I can get the individual gas temp of each cylinder. Now, the distance from the header here was just arbitrarily chosen because to allow the flanges to be removed and all, but they're all the same distance from the cylinder head port. The Another small change that I made was um, these flanges. You can see here they don't quite fit flush and I don't think they, well on this bike at least, they never were meant to fit flush. Um, but what happened with the standard ones and the TSR flanges was that people had over tightened them in the past and the flange tends to bore around the collar here. So uh, when I was installing these K-type compression things, um, I took the opportunity to uh, redesign these. So I just made them slightly bigger and slightly thicker as well. So it just makes them resist bending a little bit more. So that's it really for my show and tell on my project CBR250RR. I hope you found it interesting. Um, it's certainly been an interesting journey for me and it's not done yet. So you know, I, I keep finding new things that I want to do with the bike, um, explore new territory. I do plan on trying to keep a little bit more uh, content coming on YouTube. I haven't been very good at that in the past. but. Uh, I'm going to try and change that, so I'll give you guys a little bit more in-depth look at, um, at the bits and pieces that I'm doing for the bike. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for videos in the future, and uh, thanks for watching.